Hello and welcome everyone. I'm Alan Barty. I'm Talon Jones. And I'm Paul Shuhart. The following films on the ones we believe to be surely underrated. We'll be talking about The Shark Tale, The Black Cauldron, and Buffalo 66. This is going to be the verdict and warning there are spoilers ahead. So when you watch enough movie, there's always going to be that one movie that ticks all the right boxes for your taste. A piece of art that nourishes everything that you stand for. And yet when it comes to this film, you are shocked to find out that it's the opposite case for everybody else. The theme of the day is that movies you love, but everyone hates. And what better way to give you that movie, it, it better way to give you that movie is to recognize it for us to talk about it. Let's take a quick look at Shark Tales, the trailer. As long as anyone could remember, Lenny was a different kind of shark. I don't know how else to say this to you, Lenny. You see something, you eat it, period. That's what sharks do. You gotta understand, when you look weak, it makes me look weak. I know. Right here in front of me now, eat this. <gasps> oh, jeez, Hop. Here's the thing. I'm a, I'm a vegetarian. You're a good person. Oh, no. As long as anyone could remember, no! Oscar was always in trouble. Is a sure. He trips underwater. Who trips underwater? And by the way, on what? That's it. All right. I want you to find the deepest, darkest hole in the ocean and put him in it. Ah, oh no. Then, the little fish told a great white lie. Oscar, did you kill him? Yeah, yeah, exa exactly how it looked. That's how it is. Remember this name. Oscar the Shark Slayer! You lied! Everybody thinks you slayed the shark! You need to slay a shark, and I need to disappear. Here's what we're gonna do. Da -da -da -da! Oh, yeah! From the studio that brought you Shrek. Yo, Angie needs to get her freak on. Come on, Angie. Dance with me, mama. You might not ever get me. Uh -huh. What do you do? I can't see it! Sharks are coming to get me! Sometimes I want to take your big dumb dummy head and just sing it. Just show those sharks who's boss. Here I come! Ta-da! I tell you what's what. And what? What? What what? What what nothing? You said what first. I didn't say what first. You said and then what, and I said what? No, I said what what? You said what first? Oh, shark tail. Now snap your fin right on the snap it. <laughs> You're not snapping it. Oscar. Uh, oh, hey, don't sweat it. A lot of white fish can't do it. So after watching that monstrosity of <laughs> CGI, <laughs> look, uh, so pretty much the premise of Shark Tales is that you have Oscar voiced by Will Smith, who is working at pretty much a car wash. Um, well, pretty much a whale wash because they're on the sea and everything. But, uh, and so he's trying to like make it big. He wants to be famous. He wants to be on the top, you know, top of the reef. He wants to be one of those, uh, famous, like, I don't know, like. Wants like, to be Will Smith, essentially. Yeah, pretty much Will Smith. <laughs> Will Smith wants to be Will Smith. Except without the slapping. But, uh, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, and so pretty much, uh, during some circumstances, uh, one of the sharks who's pretty much like the son of, like the head shark, who's pretty much the mob, yeah, gets mob killed leader. like you know by an anchor by accident, and he takes the credit for killing pretty much the son and of the mob boss. And ironically, his br that shark who's died, his brother, tells him, "Hey, I can help you pretend to kill sharks." It's like, I mean, I know that my brother just died, but hey, can you pretend to kill me too? <laughs> yeah, I mean, the reason for that is I, because in the movie. He wants to get away from his father and the yeah. rest of his family because he, quote unquote, doesn't fit in because he likes to be uh, a vegetarian, even I... though biologically that wouldn't work. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> so, look, growing up, I liked this movie a lot because I was watching it on DVD. You know, we all have those movies where we watch a lot on DVD and we watch the special features and it's like, oh, I love this movie, da 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 da. But then as you grow up, you realize that, yeah, people don't like this movie and. They don't like the CG, and they don't like Will Smith with his big lips. <laughs> and is for some reason they gave a fish like a hairline, which is way too much in the back. But uh, <laughs> only a few people are going to get that. But uh, 
I would say that, yeah, I understand why people don't like this movie because of CGI. And also, you can say that they just cast all these celebrities just to pull in celebrity clout. Oh, that, that's pretty that's, much it. That's true. You know, I got to say, I think Will Smith is probably like the best uh, voice actor out of this whole movie because like, he, so he really gives it a lot. Well, and, if you see the behind the scenes videos, him and Jack Black are like really getting oh, into Jack it. Black's they're in, this too, they're in like the recording booth together. They're making all these hand gestures. They're smiling at each other. They're actually making the faces. They're looking like they're having fun. And I'm like, I wish the movie was this. Because yeah, like the Nero's character, he's just phoning it in. Like, I don't know if the Nero just needed the money or I mean, he just probably wanted to do something for his family. Like, we all know those actors where they have that big role you like know, the Godfather and then everything else they had just have to do like these parodies <laughs> like nowadays like celebrities you can think of like the rock mm -hmm. is doing that thing where he does the like, eyebrow thing in every movies all that kind of stuff but i mean the yeah most... but i wouldn't i wouldn't call the rock a serious you know actor he's i think fun I mean, actor. He, he's fun and he i mean he knows who he is and he like He's profited off that because he, he knows where he's at and what movies he's making. But I don't know. I mean, these are some celebrities like Corsese is in there. I mean, I mean that is an Andrew actual Jolie's director. He's directed some of the like, best movies of all time. Yeah. I mean, it is crazy that he agreed to do this movie. Like, he probably didn't want to do something for his grandkids. That's all right. I mean, but the thing about it is that some of these uh, actors actually do other DreamWorks movies after this. I mean, Jack Black... And Angelina Jolie oh, went to do Kung, Kung Fu, Fu Panda, Panda. Mm -hmm. which, I mean, before Kung Fu Panda, I know we're getting off track, but before Kung Fu Panda came out, people were like, Kung Fu Panda, and voiced by Jack Black, yeah, it was going to be bad. <laughs> oh, we, even I thought it was going to be bad, and I was like 10, <laughs> but it ended up being amazing. That's but good. I for, mean, I think the thing is, like, this movie, I think, can work better. It's just, like, the writing has to be better. It just didn't feel a reason to exist. Like, it just kind of meandered. Like, I remember seeing this when I was about seven years old with my cousins. Like, my aunt happened, she bought the DVDs, like, hey kids, you want to watch Shark Tale? We were like, yeah, Will Smith! We sat around the TV, and within 20 minutes, we were all either asleep, or we're running around the room just playing with with our toys and stuff. And you could say, oh, it's just a bunch of kids, so they're obviously not going to sit around for movies. Like, that same night, we watched Scooby-Doo on Zombie Island, which had been out for years at that point. And we were glued to the TV, so don't say it was because we were kids. <laughs> I mean, and also the thing about the movie is, I will say, is this is a lot of taking, hey, we're fish, but it's pretty much the real world. So this many, point. so yeah. many fish puns. Like this, there was one part that got a big laugh at me, and that was the sushi bar scene. <laughs> it was like one shot, but it made me laugh so hard. I, loved yeah, I it. totally forgot about that. Yeah, scene. because it's yeah. like, wait, how would that work? And then he's just like, that's why they're. Yeah. Is but so if you bad. think about it too much, it's like, wait, are you, is this oh, like a Sweeney no. Todd situation where yes. you're just murdering yeah. fish and just bringing yes. into this restaurant? He's also the barber. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I remember the video game more than oh, I remember the movie and the Burger King toys. I never oh, played the video right. game. If I anyone is. who knows yeah. the video thing, game knows about the dance level, that was nearly impossible to beat. And the thing about Will Smith in the video game looked worse. <laughs> yes, he did. <laughs> because he had more teeth. You know, I don't really know what, you know, most like kid stories, there's, there's a moral to the story, you know, but he this one kind of feels like, like any, I don't feel like Will Smith really learned anything. No, he didn't. He would have just kept doing this if he was able to, you know. But because of the power of love, he changed <laughs> his mind. So I don't, I don't know. I don't really feel like. It's I, not as bad as I remember. I'll give it that. Didn't it, I think it did like really well at the box office. Oh, it did great in the box yeah. office. That's what shocked me when I was yeah. doing research for the movie. I was like, wait, that was a success? I don't remember a single kid in my elementary school talking about it. I were at least not talking about going to see it. They were talking about commercials and stuff and the video game. But none of us were saying that they actually saw it in theaters. I mean, the thing about this movie is that, look, I'm not going to say I was, oh, yeah, I love this movie. But it's like one of those movies where if I watch it now, it's just like a comfort movie because it's not the movie itself. Mm -hmm. It just brings me back to a time mm -hmm. as a kid where everything was more relaxed and everything. Simpler. Like, I've met some people who do actually like this movie, and I'm glad this movie brought you comfort as a child. Like, that's actually really cool. <laughs> I thought there was going to be a but <laughs> after that. But this movie still <laughs> sucks. <laughs> it's just, I wouldn't say it sucks, just not very good. <laughs> Yeah, and I mean it has some metaphors to nowadays where that, I, that it does. wouldn't I did happen. Not like because mm -hmm. you can like you can see that the whole thing of the son not being accepted could be a, a metaphor for him coming out of the closet yes. and living his own mm -hmm. life and everything. Most definitely something that kids probably didn't pick up on. Hell, probably a lot of adults back then were who had their head in the sand. They probably didn't pick up on that either. But seeing it now, it's like oh okay okay, it's not so bad. That's actually pretty cool. Yeah. 
Yeah, and I think this this kind of was like a big shift from traditional voice actors getting roles to now what we see as like, oh, if we just hire celebrities that aren't very good, but they have name brand recognition, yeah. and then you, people will come. No. This was one watch. of the first examples of that yeah. I ever saw as a kid, or movies in general, they just have an all-star cast and nothing else, because all the advertising wasn't about the story of the movie. It was just who was, who in, was it. in it. Yeah, yeah because I never even saw at, anything like that before. Yeah, because even, even in the, the trailer, the they ended off doing that whole big thing of the car wash, you know, where everybody's singing, they everybody, like, you know, <laughs> you know, working at the car wash, and they do a big slide of everyone's name, Will Smith, oh. Jack Black, and Alita Jolie. Like, you know what you came here for. A bunch <laughs> of celebrities ass fish. Yeah. Mm. I, the, on, the advertising, just, it was just about saying, Will Smith's a fish. Right. So, right. Yeah. Was it. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I know he's been in some, not not to say a pun, but some hot water. <laughs> no laugh, no laugh. So, okay, well. Well, that's all we have for Shark Tales. When we come back, we're going to look at another bad movie by my friend Talon, The Black Cauldron. My Shiro doesn't always wear a cape, but she always has time for a hug, a smile, for going the extra mile. My Shiro stretches every dollar, puts in long hours, puts others first. But now it's your time, Mom. When you're ready to retire, we want you to be able to enjoy it. It's time to start saving now. A free three-minute online chat can give you the personalized tips you need to start boosting your retirement savings today. Visit aceyourretirement.org slash Shiro. The Black Cauldron is a 1985 animated dark fantasy from Walt Disney Pictures and tells the story of a young pig keeper named Taryn and his friends who are trying to stop the Horned King from unleashing an army of the dead from the power of the Black Cauldron. This film had an extremely difficult production history and test audiences ran screaming out of the theater in terror. How about, it had about 15 minutes of content cut from the film because it was too scary for kids. Black Cauldron was a critical and box office disaster that almost ruined Disney forever. Let's look at the trailer. Legend has it, there was once a king so cruel and so evil that the gods feared him. Since no prison could hold him, he was trapped forever in the form of a great black cauldron. The old king, that black-hearted devil. Walt Disney Pictures presents The Black Cauldron. Escape into a world of darkness. Are you coming? Me? Go in there? Oh, no, no, no. It's a terrible place. A world of excitement. <sighs> a world of dreams. Aaron, the greatest warrior, a true hero. And through the magic of 70-millimeter photography and six-track Dolby sound, you will be transported to a fantasy event for the entire family. Look! Look, sire! It's working! Soon, the Black Cauldron will be mine. In the great tradition of Disney animated classics, now comes the newest Disney spectacle of them all, the Black Cauldron. So like I said, this movie almost destroyed Biz Disney. It actually lost in the box office to the Care Bears film that was in theaters for several months. <laughs> wow. That is just sad. <laughs> that is crazy. Um, Disney literally tried to bury this movie, didn't even give it a home release for 13 years. It's, it took 13 years to get a VHS release, and they barely ever played it on TV. It's like the Care Bear just came in with a crowbar and <laughs> yes. the whore came the knees. <laughs> we really care to destroy you. I guess friendship is magic. I mean, magic, I mean money. But This was also one of the, actually it was the most expensive animated film at the time. It was definitely Disney's most expensive, costing $44 million back in, back in the 80s. That was insane. And it made a little over $20 million in the box office. Ooh. I mean, the That's animation, right. I will say, is great. Oh, uh, it's wonderful. Because, you of course, it it's like Disney. And the thing is that it doesn't really have that quote-unquote Disney character designs. It has mm -hmm. more of like a, onto something from like Secret of Nim kind of character designs. Ironically, kind of. ironically, that was made by a former Disney animator. Oh. oh. 
So the more you know. Now, it reminded me of there were a lot of '80s movies that remind me of this, like uh, Heavy Metal, as well as mm -hmm. um, Star Chaser, The Legend of Orin. That, that reminds me a lot of that. Oh yeah, me too. Where it's kind of the more fluid animation, something like that. that Ralph Bakshi probably would have made. Mm -hmm. uh, what's that one video game where it's all animated Dragon's and it's a Lair. knife? <laughs> yeah, that, yeah. Now you talk about it, remind me of that. That's also much. that's from the same creator of uh, Secret of Nim, who was a Disney animator. Huh, again, the more Don you know. <laughs> John when's, the, when's the rainbow gonna show up? <laughs> but uh, I mean, look, I watched this movie like this morning so I have friends in my mind and the thing about this movie is that it feels like it kind of pulls magic out of a hat oh, with some does. of these items because it's like okay the main character how do you say his name again uh, uh, Taryn Taryn out of all the three has the most normal name but uh, <laughs> like okay he has to pretty much take care of a pig but he wants glory, he wants to go on the war Even and everything. Even though he can't do anything, right? <laughs> Even though he constantly messes up. It's like, I'm a warrior, you swing a stick around, sit down, buddy. <laughs> and the thing is, it's like, okay, like we have, okay, you have to protect this pig because, okay, for some reason he could look into the future and see where things are. And then, okay, that kind of is out of nowhere, quote unquote, is no one gonna explain this magic pig? Okay. Just a pig's an oracle, apparently. And then moments later, we see a princess with a magic orb that helps her around, which oh, I was confused by that. It was like, okay, does she summon that? Is like a fairy? <laughs> What's going on? It's Princess Alanawi. Alanawi? I, I don't know how to pronounce it. And also the bard, uh, Fluta Flum. I think that's his name. I, I, I'm probably butchering that, but the movie butchers it too. Yeah, like he's about, like about to cover something out of your throat. But like you said with um, how Shark Tale was a comfort movie for you, I actually do associate this with my childhood as well because I remember coming home from school early because of a dentist appointment, and they were playing it on Toon Disney. That was probably the only time they would ever play oh, it on TV was when Disney. all the kids were in school. That was the only time they would ever play it on TV, and I was just so fascinated by it. I only saw the second half. I was like, I, what is this? Like, I've never seen anything like this, especially from Disney. So it kind of captivated me, and I also happened to—I uh, was watching it around October, so it felt right. Oh uh, yeah, so like it is like very scary. Yeah, I like I like. I mean, there. Are, I mean, there's one moment where the main character literally has blood coming out of his mouth just a little bit. <laughs> but Disney, his... that was weird. <laughs> and then there's one moment where they're about to cut the pig's head off, but you can see the blood stains yep. from previous victims. And of course, the scene that got the kids screaming out of the theater was the Black Cauldron Born scene, where the Army of the Dead was rising for the first time. That scene was severely cut. You even brought up how it seemed very choppily edited. There's a reason. There was a lot more gore in that scene to the point where. Kassenberg, the guy who was basically running Disney's animation studio, was freaking out. It, the movie could have gotten an R rating in nine, it, when it came out initially. So they had to cut so much out of it, changed up some of the animation, and yeah, it definitely shows on the screen. And that's honestly why a lot of people like this movie, is because of the production history behind it. It took years to make, it was very expensive. It was the director's passion project, and it got severely trimmed down. And people are wondering, because Disney, they don't throw away stills. They keep everything. That means there is a full director's cut somewhere in the Disney vault that fans are just begging to see. You know what I kind of like about this movie? And it's something that, it, it, it's, it's such a unique history in Disney where they actually took risks, you know? They mm -hmm. actually went out and like, hey, let's try to come up with some new ideas. I feel like Disney now has completely abandoned that idea. And they're like, let's just make the same movie as many times as we can. And then after we're done with that, let's just make it into live action. Yep. And then we'll just make prequels and sequels. And we'll just base all our movies around like the same kind of ideas. I mean, you can, and it is so boring. I can also see, uh, I mean, I've seen like, I, I actually like uh, recent Disney movies that aren't like the remakes. Like I like Encanto uh, and all this mm -hmm. stuff. And like there's a new animated film that's actually trying to go back to traditional animation with a mixture of 3D called Wish. Uh, that they're doing so they are like there is still creativeness in disney it's just that you know they keep on putting out these remakes which remakes have been around for like a lot of time but um going back to the black cauldron the thing i will say is that when you like you want to mention that yeah that was pretty quick where where throughout the whole movie the horn king is like yes my army of the dead <laughs> rise <laughs> rise and then two minutes later it's like oh well oh he's a total wimp like okay the horn king is such a cool villain act First, the first half of the movie, he's very threatening. He's got this. He's played by John Hurt, one of the original Doctor Who's, and he was also Ollivander in Harry Potter. Mm -hmm. He's got a great booming voice, and the design itself is amazing. Mm -hmm. 
but halfway through the movie, he's just, just like, oh, the Black Cauldron, and then he becomes like a total wimp who gets his butt kicked constantly. Yeah, because as soon as his army goes down, it's like, wake up, wake up, you fools, come on, and I got nothing else going <laughs> for But me. even before that, when, like, you know, when they, like, first escaped from the actual movie, like, he was like, there's nothing, he was like, acting like a little wimp. Yep, I know this movie's not very good. It deserves a lot of this critical backlash. Uh, but I got a soft spot for dumb children's animated films like this and fantasies. I'm a sucker for it, but oh well. All right, well, it's time for our last movie that our dear Paul is going to introduce. Yes. When we come back, we're going to look at Buffalo 66. When you look at the number of disasters in the U.S., chances are every area will deal with some kind of emergency in the next decade. And between school, sports, and social lives, chances are you won't be with your kids when it happens. Will they know what to do? Ready.gov slash kids has the educational tools and information to make the conversation easy. When the time comes, chances are they'll feel prepared, not scared. So talk with your family today. Buffalo 66 is a 1998 romantic drama comedy written, directed, and starring Ben Scallo. Uh, the plot revolves around Gallo, uh, who kidnaps this lion dancer and forces her to pretend to be his wife to impress his parents after he gets out of prison. Let's take a look. What is this? Is this a shifter car? You think that's funny? I'm used to luxury cars. I drive cars that shift themselves. My cars shift themselves. I need you to come to my parents' house with me and pretend to be my wife. Did Billy ever tell you how we met? Billy's the nicest husband in the whole world. Don't touch me. What do you me. mean, don't touch don't me? You're touch supposed to be me. husband and wife. No, really. I'm the luckiest girl. What did you say? One, two, three, get out of the car. I fell madly in love with him. Oh, they haven't won a championship since 1966. And I missed that game because that's the day I had Billy. Did you like Buffalo, too? If you fail to convince the court, and very evil and very bad things are going to happen. Can you go to jail or something? Yeah, but he was innocent. Remember that guy, Wood? No good. I'd really like to find him. Are you still going to do that bad thing you said you were going to do? He missed that field goal on purpose. He got paid money, and he missed it on purpose. I thought somebody turned up the heat. Where's the girl? I'm his wife. Oh! 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 She's not my wife. What did I just tell you? I'm not looking. I'm just imagining. I picked her up hitchhiking. I'm a free guy, you know what? That's not my style. These photos are us in love, spanning time. Just look like you like them. That's it. Can you do that? Come here and give me a hug. <laughs> Ooh. I know what you're thinking. The story is hard to believe, right? You should have seen him. He was so beautiful. All right, good. Let's see how they are. Come on. Welcome back. Now, do you guys agree with the criticism against this movie? Or what's your guys' thoughts on this? Because I, I personally really like this movie. I did not like it. <laughs> I found it very boring and pretentious. And I'm like, I just want to leave. Like, stop. I just want to go. I don't <laughs> like these people. <laughs> I found it, um, it was very uncomfortable. But I think that was the director's intent. But... It felt pretentious. Um, I, I was like, I feel like this this director, he thinks he's making the best movie ever, but I'm like, it feels more like kind of an ego trip. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, I got some of his intentions. I thought that some of it was actually well acted, decent. It, like so A lot of the acting is actually great. Oh, yeah. yeah. And I do like that it's a simpler story, uh, definitely an intense and uncomfortable one, but a simple story nonetheless. So much so that... I was kind of wondering how they're going to stretch it out to feature length. I was thinking the same thing when I first watched this. So this movie was right around the same time of like independent films were kind of booming. That was when Sundance was at its right. biggest point. It was point. huge. And we can't forget the classic The Room. <laughs> right, right. And so, uh, you know, Vince Gallo, right, he, he, uh, he, I think he co-wrote this with someone else, but I'm not sure because... He, he was just a tyrant on set from what I heard. Everybody that worked on this movie, like all the cast, hate him, 
hate his guts. They were like, I never want to talk to him ever again. Never want to work with him ever again. And so I, I watching this movie, it, like you said, it's uncomfortable because of just how grabby and like angry he, he sounds. And I just, at times I'm wondering if he's even acting. I don't think he is. Because I'm like, like, all right, guy, you know, it's like, Getting a little, getting a little handsy, you guy. You know. <laughs> no, in all honesty, while I was watching this, I just kept getting a feeling like this guy is probably a real jerk in real life. And then you told me, like, tell, talk about some of the production stories that you. He, uh, he, he fired one of the cinematographers, and so they had to find a new guy. And the new guy uh, didn't like him at all. And Vince Gallo said that he felt like he didn't do anything, and that he was should be credited as the uh, cinematographer. And so the cinematographer at the time was like, all right, I don't even want to be credited, but the film did really great. And so he's like, actually, you know what, add my name. <laughs> and uh, I do love the cinematography in this movie. It's pretty cool. It it's some, is. It's in the editing that's really weird to me. Yes. Like some of the, they just start adding in random shots. I guess it's <laughs> supposed to be the inner workings of his dark mind. But, it, but I, for me, for me yeah. it was, yeah, there was that part where he was sitting on like a bench or something after he got out of prison, and they, they just started adding in a bunch of random shots of him, and I'm like, I guess it's supposed to be what's going on in his mind and how full and stressed it is, but for me, I was like, it's just, that it just looks silly. No, part of me was like, I wonder why he was in prison. Mm -hmm. I know, it's, it's like one of those things where watching this movie, I was just feeling like, okay, I get it, it's artsy, it's artsy, I don't like some of these characters. Like it again, it just feels like I'm just forced to be at this really bad Thanksgiving dinner where I'm just like, Ugh, can I go? This is cringe. Yeah, and it was like the biggest next to Beauty and the Beast, this is the biggest Stockholm syndrome movie oh, I've wow. ever seen in yes. my life. Cause I was like, Why doesn't she leave? Like, there's so many times where I'm like, You could leave, but by the end of the movie, she's in love with a guy. Like she's genuinely in love with her kidnapper, and I'm just like, Why? Yeah, yeah, but, <laughs> yeah. Beauty, yeah but Beauty and the Beast has songs. <laughs> At least the Beast was nice to her in that. <laughs> at like, least, look, at least Belle had a magic castle. Come on, people. Like, Billy was a jerk throughout the whole nice. thing. And I was like, I, I get he had a rough childhood, but I'm like, there's only so much a person can take. Well, you can yeah. have a rough childhood, but I can still not like the person. I, you know, I, th I think the major theme in this movie is that people often will go through life and things just don't always have to line up or make sense because like the mother she's insane right obsessed she loves with the buffalo yeah girls. just obsessed with them and just like watches their games it's like they don't have any photos of him as a child but except they have one except with one. bingo oh. yeah. who the dad killed for peeing in the house <laughs> yeah oh, and man. the mom literally right in front of him said like uh oh, the bills lost they lost the super bowl that year when you were born i blame you yeah, that was like i wish you were never born it's like that just came out of nowhere <laughs> Hey man, she loves football. Well, I mean, it was the only game that she missed. You know, I do like that there was a little bit of an Adam Sandler reunion in this with Angelica Houston and Christina Ricci. You know, right. Morticia and Wednesday coming back together. So I was like, that's actually kind of cool. I never noticed that until you pointed that out. Yeah, it was yeah. Just Angel I actually did not even know it was Angelica Houston. Yeah, I didn't know if it was Wednesday because you have blonde hair. Uh, so uh, do you guys understand like the criticisms? Uh, just to wrap it up, of like your movies that like we all presented. I definitely do. Uh, my movie, it is. Sloppy, it was heavily edited, and some of the characters can be extremely annoying. Uh, I understand mine because, again, Will Smith, CGI fish. <laughs> That's all I gotta say about it. Say no more. Say no more, and also it just feels like, I mean, I love like the, the music they do put in it, but you know how it is. Yeah, yeah, you know, I mean, I can understand why people don't like this movie, but I can also understand why this movie is such uh, in such a weird gray area. Oh, it's I definitely think, a great in movie. Film history, so. Well, that's all the time we have for today. To the next Thursday, we will go over the what was it that? Biographical films. Ooh, I can't even say that word. I must be <laughs> messing up already. This has been the verdict, and thank you for watching.